from the Pedestrian Advisory Commission want to begin this meeting by affirming BPAC's commitment to equity and racial justice. We would like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held on lands that have served as the home for diverse indigenous communities long before current governments were established here. We pay our respect to the elders and members of these communities, both past and present, and recognize the harms of genocide and colonialism. We will make a conscious effort to reflect on the following questions as we advance through our business and contemplate changes in our community. And we recognize that achieving equity requires our commitment to an ongoing process. How can we seek to repair harm with our work and not erase history? How does our work impact the vul vulnerability and safety of people who hold many intersecting marginalized identities, including black, indigenous, and people of color, people with disabilities, and lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning people? How can we prioritize and center people in our decision-making? How can we be more responsive to local needs? And how can our work build community power and shared decision making? Thanks, Landon. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll go through. So we touched on it, I guess. Uh, we, do we have any known absences? Um, Hannah, I know we have Mike Shepard isn't able to make it. Um, do we have anyone else? And then Hannah Preston. Oh, yeah. Hannah Preston. Okay. Great. Um, and we have, uh, so we are full, hopefully soon. Sounds like Nastasia will be sworn in, uh, hopefully by the next meeting, right? That's the goal. Okay. So it looks like we'll don't have any openings at the moment. I will be transitioning off uh, of BPAC at the end of January. So hopefully we've uh, Hannah and I were communicating with the uh, city clerk's office and hopefully they'll put a listing up for my role and have somebody by March is the goal, I think. I think everyone here has been introduced, so we'll skip introductions. I, oh, so, uh, go no. ahead. Yeah. Um, we actually have a new city council um, liaison. It's Carl Reist. Um, I have, I tried to promote him to be panelist. Um, but he is replacing Javier um, as our BPAC liaison. So very excited to have him. Wow. Oh, hey, am I, am I uh, let's see, wait, let's see. Yes, Can you you're good now. Okay, good, yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, thanks for, I think it's not quite official, but I, I think it's just gotta be, I think Leo's gotta make it uh, formally official in the next couple of days, but, I, but I'm fully intending to join you all. And is Javier, is she also here? Uh, not right now. No, she was, we were, she was intending to join just, I think this is probably going to be her mm -hmm. last meeting. So she wanted to be able to say hi to everybody, um, in her last meeting. I have to, I actually have another engagement. I've, I've got to leave shortly, but I just want to say like, so glad to be here. I look forward to working with all of you. I can hang on for a little bit, but I'm looking forward to being part of this group. And I actually have already appreciated the comments you all shared, uh, on some of the rezonings we've been looking at. So that kind of input is really critical from you guys. So um, I look forward to working with you all in many different ways and I'm and proud to be part of this group. So thanks for having me. Thanks, Carl. Good Great. to you. see you here. Uh, Carl, I think we met briefly at um, the, the bike Durham. Exactly. Yeah. Meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah, great to see you again. Yeah. And I look forward um, to getting well, to know yeah. all of you better. So yeah, thanks so much. Sounds good, yeah. I think, I guess next, maybe January will be your first hopefully official meeting and we can do maybe more sort of a full round of introductions at that time. Yeah, yeah. Be great. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks, Carl. Um, and feel free to to you know until you sign off, feel free to sort of pop in and ask any questions if you have them. Great. Thanks. Um, and uh, we'll see if Javier joins as well. But cool. Great. That's exciting. I didn't know that until today. So that's great. It's um, more uh, change every year. There's something changing. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of. Yeah, I won't. I won't go long. Go on and on about it. But I think there's hope for for pushing more and more on a lot of the things we care about within city council and, and just, uh, I don't know if it's sort of being on BPAC makes you more aware of it, or if it's actually sort of some momentum gaining about some of the issues we care about, this Roxboro Mangum stuff that's happening with Bike Durham, we'll talk a little bit about. Yeah, um, actually, if I can say, I should say one more thing too. So I please. will be also on the on the Metropolitan Planning Organizations, so like, I think those two, those are obviously you guys and that are, are critical transportation pieces. So, and making the link between the, all this larger investment and spending on 
you know, a lot of federal and state dollars, a lot of it is like road funding, as you know, it's by formula, but like the extent that we can move all that in a direction towards like bikeability and, and uh, walkability is definitely one thing I want, I want to do. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're on board for that. <clears throat> all right. I'll um, carry forward and we can dive in and out as with questions as they come up. Um, any adjustments to the agenda from anyone here? Let me, Oh, I forgot the minutes. Sorry. Uh, hopefully, folks had a chance to, to review the minutes from uh, November. Um, oh no, sorry, that is actually next on the agenda. I missed. I missed up the order. Um, any adjustments to the agenda first? Dennis, oh, are you asking about the agenda or the minutes now? Sorry. <laughs> uh, agenda first. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I got confused on the order. Um, Dennis, for the agenda, it's just mm -hmm. going to be me presenting the social media um, uh, and communication strategy tonight. Awesome. Good to know. I had one thing. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk about budget asks for next year um, that we should start thinking about. I know the timeliness on that. It's, or it's sort of something we should think about before January. So um, I'll probably maybe a new business try to remember to bring that up. Okay, any other um, adjustments? All right, um, so for minutes from November, hopefully folks had a chance to review them. If so, take a, um, a motion to approve. Real quick, then as I notice, I, I'm on the minutes counted as both present and an excused absence. I'm pretty sure only the latter is true. Good note, thanks. Um, I will share my screen just really quickly so folks can see. Um, any other adjustments? Okay, not seeing anyone. Um, we could take a motion to approve the minutes from November. This is that I'll move that we approve the November minutes. <clears throat> I second. Second. I heard Nathan seconding. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes from November? Aye. 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 Uh, all opposed? Aye. Apologies. <laughs> I'm guessing that was not opposed. That would be correct. Okay. Great. All right. Then the minutes are unanimously approved. Thanks, everyone. Um, we, and then thanks again, Marissa, for taking this month's minutes. Okay, so moving forward now with our um, standard items. Uh, anyone from the public here? I didn't see anyone. Let me glance again. The attendees. Oh, yeah, we have a couple people. Aspen, good to have you here. Um, Lauren, I see Lauren Grove and Robin Young. Um, if you all want to introduce yourselves via the Q and A, you're welcome to just throw in a question, introducing yourself. Um, if you have a comment that you'd like to make, you can also make that through the Q and A. Um, Hannah, do you know of anyone, anything specific that we're expecting from them? No. Okay. Um, no. Okay. Yeah. Well, Lauren and Robin and Aspen, if you all have anything, just feel free to throw in the Q and A. Um, and if not, thanks for being here. Just uh, and feel free to throw any other questions you have throughout the meeting in the Q and A as well. All right. Just waiting another moment. Okay, I see. Lauren says newly hired Vision Zero coordinator with the City of Durham. Oh, Lauren, great. Didn't know that was that was you. Welcome. We're really glad to have you. Yeah, I was I was going to introduce her at the next meeting um, oh. since we already went through introductions, but yeah, Lauren Grove is the new Vision Zero person uh, with the department. Great, great. Awesome. I, we hear you're coming from Houston. So we'll talk more about it. I think at the next meeting, uh, we'll, we'll have a, a chance to sort of e-meet you a little bit more formally, but uh, thanks for being here. Uh, you'll, anyway, yeah, you'll see uh, what, what we're up to and, and feel free to sort of compile thoughts or questions that we can discuss more um, in January. All right, it's exciting. 
And um, if there are no other public comments, we can get into what we want to do today, which is um, a few different things. But I think we can start off with um, the 2024 uh, chair and vice chair roles uh, that need to be decided on today. Um, so I've spoken with um, a few folks about potentially taking on these roles. And uh, through those conversations, uh, I will nominate um, couple people, but I'd also leave it open here as an opportunity to discuss um, if folks have ideas, thoughts, or want to nominate um, anyone, including themselves. Um, but for the chair role to start, uh, I will nominate Brian Hawkins, who has um, been with, how long have you been? Um, you've been around for like over a year and a half, or maybe two years probably now, right? About um, a year and a half. Okay. It's like, it's all relative, I guess, but uh, Brian's worked with, you know, with with me on a lot of commissions, I mean, committees, and uh, anyway, we really have appreciated all the work he's done. Uh, we most recently a lot of work on DevRev that the folks on that committee are doing, but uh, Brian was uh, willing to step in and, and accept a nomination, so I would like to nominate you, Brian Hawkins, for the chair role uh, for 2024. I will uh, take a moment if folks have any thoughts or questions or, or want to nominate anyone else. And not seeing anything. I don't remember, honestly, if we have to have a motion to vote or if we can just vote. But uh, I'm assuming we're going to need a motion or I'm going to we're going to need to vote one way or another. Um, can, so maybe can we'll I... take a motion. Can, yeah, I, can I say something maybe before you take the motion? Sure. Um, just to let everybody know, you know, this is, I feel like I, by way of disclosure and all that, I, the, the one misgiving I expressed to Dennis when he asked me about this was that I do have a sometimes challenging work schedule that gets me out of the country periodically. So the, the one condition upon taking this was that I would probably need to lead on the, the, uh, is it vice chair, co-chair? What's the actual title? Vice chair. Technically. Vice chair. Thank you. Um, <laughs> to fill in periodically, maybe more than usual. And if that was cool and the vice chair is good with that, then I'm good with that. I'm very happy to take the role of presiding over these meetings and handling our communications and all that. I feel like I actually feel it's important for all of us, because if you look at the numbers, you know, we have 18 seats. We struggle to fill them. Everybody's got a three-year term, and there's, I think, five officers, if you count the committee chairs. That pretty much means everybody needs to take a turn doing something. So I'm I'm happy to do that. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to let, let you know that I, I take this on. Um, happy to do it um, if, if you're, you'll have me, but also that I'll, I will call on you for help. So. Mm -hmm. And it's worth mentioning, I'll, I'm... Uh... Would like to nominate Marissa Hartzler as well for the vice chair role uh, after conversations I've had with her and others. Um, and she's more recently joined BPAC, but really has jumped in as today as an example of uh, <laughs> to help us out at every uh, opportunity. Um, so if there's a, if Marissa or, you know, if other folks have questions for Brian or if there's a discussion we had there, but thanks, Brian, for being clear about that. I think, I think it's good to have. Um, some fluidity about that, right? Having the vice chair be able to step in, and and um, and then the committee chairs. I think we'll we'll talk about that after this as well. You know, having some um, opportunity to kind of help those folks out as well with the response to the responsibilities they all have. I guess I just say, Brian, thanks for your honesty. Um, you haven't quite scared me off yet. <laughs> Not too many trips out of the country, right? No, I'm I'm kidding. I'm I'm happy to finish it. <laughs> And I mean, I was told this when I became the chair last year, uh, whatever, for whatever that's worth, uh, it doesn't have to be, the, you know, if something comes up and you can't take on that responsibility anymore, you can, we can pick a new person for that role in, in the middle of the year. Um, so this isn't uh, some sort of like heavy contract, um, but just a willingness to step in um, while you can, we really appreciate it. Um, so I guess, yeah, any questions, thoughts on that from other folks? I think those are both excellent choices. Thanks, Jessica. Agree and appreciate the time and effort that it's taken to talk with folks. And hopefully, uh, if not, Brian and Marissa will also have a chance to talk more after this meeting tonight to kind of get the 
the groove and feel of things, but it is, it is a, it's a commitment and appreciate what you said, Brian, too, about everybody needing to step up. So hopefully you'll, uh, many of us are going to be rolling off. So I think more of the newer folks that are here, hopefully you'll get a lot of support from people and kind of build that community effort that we're kind of all in it together and folks need, <laughs> folks can help support you throughout this. So I think uh, a lot of good folks here and I think uh, Dennis has done an outstanding job and um, going to miss him obviously, but I think uh, he's, planning ahead and thinking ahead about how to keep the, keep the ball, all the balls rolling. <laughs> this is Ed. I just wanted to, to chime in as well. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, Dennis went 12 for 12. This is, I think he started as chair in January and he's led every meeting over the course of the past year. And he's just done an absolutely fabulous job. Um, so I wanted to extend my gratitude and um, yeah. Maybe Thanks, Thanks, with you all, it's easy. <laughs> Suzanne, I mean, we said so last year, following your footsteps after, I mean, you were double leading committee and commission. That's um, anyway, we won't even get started on that. And still going strong. And, uh, and I suckered you into the chair roll. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. Wait until, the, wait until it's official. I know I, I go back. I say ideal suckered me in by just throw, like it was like my second meeting or third meeting or something. And she was like, why doesn't Dennis just be the vice chair? And then from, from there, pretty much. Uh, um, so, yeah, Marissa. No, there's no. Yeah. I mean, as you know, there's no such thing as too little experience. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, appreciate all the kind words. I am. Very happy with the two folks that I've nominated, of course. Um, and if other folks have questions, feel free. Otherwise, we'll take a motion to vote for the chair first. I motion that we move for the nomination for Brian Hawkins as chair. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor of Brian Hawkins taking on the chair role for 2024. Aye. 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 Seeing eyes, hearing eyes, um, all opposed. Not seeing or hearing anything. All right. Congratulations, Brian Hawkins. Thanks for taking on this new chair role for the new year. Um, and for vice chair, take a similar motion if there are no other questions or thoughts. I move that we move ahead with the uh, vote on Marissa as vice chair. I'll second I'll all right, Jeff. Thanks. All in favor of uh, Marissa Hartzler taking on the vice chair role for 2024. Aye. 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 All opposed? Not hearing or seeing anything. All right. Congratulations, Marissa, um, our new vice chair for the new year. All right. Thank you to both of you. Uh, and yeah. Well, so what we'll do after this is we'll get on an email and just, I'm not even, I think the first thing we'll, we'll, we'll talk about right after, right next is the retreat, but uh, I don't think we have too much to worry about for you all until January, but um, not, not that there's that much, but we'll just start getting you hooked into the emails uh, in the new year. Um, thanks. I'm sure there'll be more said, uh, but we really appreciate it. Okay. Let's see. So I guess it, we could take a moment. Um, well, should we take a moment now or should we talk later about committee uh, chair? Maybe I'll leave it for the committee discussion. Is that okay? I don't know if we had too much planned for uh, the committee chairs. Um, yeah, actually, I'll, well, I'll just say right now what I'm aware of rather than sort of beating around the bush a little bit. Um, so I, we know that uh, Scott Carter and Mike Shepard are willing to continue as the chairs for their respective committees, um, DevRev and Pi. So thank you, Scott and Mike, uh, who's not here right now, but to both of you for, for being willing to do that. You stepped in kind of after Dan, after Dan and Mike Mormon left, uh, kind of, you know, the sort of stalwarts of those committee, committees uh, jumped in and were willing to kind of give it a go and, and you're still going strong and it's been great actually. 
um, to see. I think we're doing some new things and some new systems, some new processes that are, are really showing uh, fruit, especially on DevRev. You guys got a, a nice machine rolling there. Let me not jinx Thank it. You. But, uh, thanks, Scott. And we'll talk Good, more about committed that. members. So uh, yeah, it makes it easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And uh, an invitation to, um, I wasn't at the not last meeting, but uh, just an invitation to folks, uh, especially the new folks who haven't gone to a DevRev meeting yet, even if you don't think it makes sense for you, I think it's good to just go at some point um, and see how it's done, see what's happening there. Uh, Carl mentioned it, uh, Carl Rist, right? So this the plans we're reviewing, I think, are going to be, they're, they're a big part of what, what, Dev, uh, what Pi does, uh, sorry, what BPAC does as a whole, right? Um, so it's interesting to see what's happening there. Um, and then for Tripoli, e, I know, Suzanne, you've been the chair for how many years now? Long time. Um, but uh, I don't know if you have a, an update on that or if we're just going to kind of work into January, um, sort of thinking about a uh, new chair uh, potentially phasing in there. I don't, I don't have a confirmation from anyone. So if uh, folks, anybody here is interested in taking on that role, I'd certainly be happy to meet with you and discuss it. It's really, uh, again, I didn't have any experience before taking on the role from the folks who were in it before me. It's really just about kind of working with the committee and working with the whole commission to figure out what are some priorities you wanna move forward. Um, my one recommendation would be to slim down sometimes those priorities and maybe focus on one or two things for the year ahead and that way there's some traction um, and some collaboration. But uh, I'd certainly welcome anybody here who's interested. If you don't wanna to speak tonight, feel free to reach out to me by email um, and we can have some conversations, but definitely I, I have to roll off in uh, early part of the summer. And so would love to get somebody in the role by January, February, as much as possible <laughs> and kind of get, get go things moving. And I think one thing that we've done on Pi, which is useful is that the role of the chair is really just to be present and kind of uh, setting up the agenda beforehand and just keeping the topics sort of uh, bucketed, right? Like understanding what's probably gonna be discussed. Doesn't have to be the one necessarily doing the outreach or doing the work that maybe we're hoping to bring back to the committee. So um, if folks are thinking they wanna be, yeah, anyway, that, I think that's kind of another way to look at the role that shouldn't be all on the shoulders of the chair to do all the work in the committee. Exactly, yeah, um, yeah. it's ownership so, by everybody. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so yeah, so then thanks so much for for of course uh, being sort of the triple E uh, flag bearer for so long. But yeah, let's talk for sure. If folks want to come to the next triple E meeting, that starts or uh, that is done on the, the second Tuesday, right? So we'll have one in January. Um, we can talk about getting that set up, and if not, we'll we will start asking folks uh, or reaching out to folks directly. All right. Anything else on the committees? I think that's all well I have. All right. So uh, the next thing to discuss is the retreat. Yeah. Or, yeah, I guess we can, let's discuss the retreat first. Um, so let me share my, my screen and show you all. Uh, thanks for everyone for filling out the, um, uh, the uh, form, the Google form over the last couple of weeks. Um, so we have dates and I know I kind of messed up the, the, I didn't give a chance, uh, people a chance to say they couldn't attend at all, even remotely, but I think we have enough attendance, um, or like enough folks that could attend in person that we probably would try to just have a full in-person retreat. At least that's my suggestion, but this is now, you know, this is a discussion, so I'm happy to sort of, uh, Think about what's possible here but um this is pretty much you can see the blue you know it's like i think february 3rd and 4th are the kind of the most folks can attend in person um so i'm leaning i would probably suggest a february 4th um retreat day but uh and yeah mary rose go ahead i was gonna say uh bike durham decided to have their retreat on february 4th yeah i was wondering uh, okay yeah uh, is it on the third um, is fine. Third's good. Yeah, it's just, just the fourth. Okay. Can't be in two places at once. Yeah. <laughs> two retreats in one day. I don't know what the, is it just you? Is it um is it it's just the board you and staff? 
Board and staff. Okay. So, okay. So that puts the third and the fourth at similar. You, you were one of the 12 that could go? Yeah. Is that right, Miriam? Okay. So now they're yeah. kind of even. Um, do folks have any thoughts about the days here? Otherwise, uh, I think February third or fourth seems to make sense. Um, we haven't decided where yet, but maybe just talking about the date first. And I guess is in person only um, agreeable? I mean, we're we're gonna miss a few folks, three or four. I mean, I think in person would be nice, nice just to have some in person connection. Uh, I guess my question about that date is Mary Rose going to be retreated out going to two in one weekend. Fortunately, we're on the front half of that weekend. It's That's such, true. Sounds like. Yeah. So we'll get all the enthusiasm. It looks like the, the 10th is also the same as the third. Mm, yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, so either way is fine. I think um, we, when like Durham was deciding their weekends, uh, they decided not to do the 10th because that could be a potential like Valentine's weekend thing. So I don't know if that's something anybody else has concerns over. Nick and I, I can celebrate be, whenever. I won't be in town that entire weekend, but not because of Valentine's Day, family obligation stuff. But of course I understand what, um, works most for most people uh should end up being the retreat date yeah yes um one other thought yeah so sa saturday i guess either the third or the tenth sound like they will be yeah i guess third fourth or tenth honestly are all the same number at this point right uh is what that's coming out to any any folks who could attend remotely um who cannot attend in person but could attend remotely on either the third the fourth or the tenth and i can't see everyone you know? so these folks are raising Go ahead, are you Amy. able to see the names of the people who said Remotely? Yeah, so I can, yeah, I can, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to not didn't, uh, do the homework on that one. Um, I wonder if there's like an easy way. Um, it's okay if not. Yeah, I can. It's just, yeah. Is it there a like a, a second. is there like a spreadsheet view? Yeah, I should just do this, right? Um, that's a good Great idea. Thanks, Mary Rose. Um, except we have to do. Anyway, I'll, while I'm doing this, uh, <laughs> uh, which days was it? It was probably 18th, 17th. So the 10th, 4th, and 3rd. Looks like we have uh, Suzanne, maybe. Were you not able to attend on the 3rd and the 4th? Uh, no, uh, uh sorry, gosh. Suzanne Schmall. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. there are two Suzanne's. Yeah. Oh, um, did I not put those as dates? I think you put remote only for, um, for the fourth and for the third. I honestly can't remember why I did that. Okay. Um, <laughs> it may be, I think I, cause I didn't have no option. I may uh, mm -hmm. have a commitment on one of those days, but I'm not seeing it on my calendar right now. So I would say the third and fourth are both options. Okay. All right. Um, and yeah, I'm not trying to like bully people into <laughs> coming to the retreat, of course. <laughs> uh, just trying to confirm. Um, yeah, I see Andres isn't available on the 10th. Um, Hannah Preston, Jack Doherty um, wouldn't be able to. Okay. So. Um, Marissa, would you be, was your remote only on the 10th? Do you remember if that was um, unavailable or actually remote only? So I'm looking at my calendar. I could probably swing it now. Okay. In person, sorry. Mm -hmm. In person. Oh, okay. Okay. Really is a crapshoot then, I guess, folks. Um, maybe we 
go for, I'm leaning towards the third. Well, sorry, Royal, I see you now. <laughs> Another uh, direct one person question. Was your remote only on the third unavailable or could you actually attend remotely? Remote would be good. Okay. Actually, um, yeah, it does it does look like if Marissa can do the tenth, maybe that does make the tenth a good day. That'd be Yeah, I was just reminded why I didn't let mm -hmm. me date. Um it's my partner's birthday weekend that we did. So the tenth would probably be better. <laughs> okay. So we we're missing Hannah Preston and Andres who could make the weekend before. Uh, but could not I'll, make. I'll have to check in okay. with Hannah. I'm. Yeah. I I think I put remote only for for the tenth and the eleventh, but I I wouldn't be able to be there in any capacity. Yeah. But um, the third and fourth, I would be able to be there and in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think she, yeah, Hannah's also um, Hannah Preston's also in person for that weekend. So let me even update these. So this is like uh, this is unavailable. And this is uh, so. Yeah, we are missing three on that on the February the tenth. I can make February third work if I need to. Uh, no worries. I think I think it's kind of. I think we're still. You would be kind of maybe. So, I'm currently. I mean, if folks have a thought, I'm just kind of you know. Fleshing it out here. And I did all. not fill out the survey. I can do all three 10 days, all three days, but I still vote the 10th. Yeah. I think the 10th makes sense at the moment. Just if we have all, if Marissa, just, you know, I didn't, I don't want you to have to commit to being, you know, uh, but if Marissa, you are saying you could make it now, um, then that probably is our highest number and I, the, the reason i'm i'm doing it this way is because i'm assuming we'll have an, a fully in-person retreat and we won't try to do some hybrid portion or part online um that's my lean i don't know if folks have a thought about that dennis i, I was actually going to ask i mean are we even going to have the capability of doing a hybrid setup i mean usually retreats aren't very conducive to a hybrid setup as opposed to you know if we had a meeting like we're like we have now um yeah you're, you're right i said hybrid well so ideal was mentioning she has the access to this to her uh, i think a co-working space or something like that i guess we um but i i think you're right though i think it would be more like we have a one hour maybe one or two hour meeting online first and then the in-person folks would meet up after lunch or for lunch after mm. that um, are we having the equity training then too though yeah what so the equity training is in person do we do that and we we can do that at any like we we decide when to do that ourselves right we don't have to we do it together but like yeah it, it doesn't have to be at a specific time no yeah we'll um we'll coordinate with her i guess yeah that is a point i mean she said saturdays would work um but i mean we can say the 10th then if for some reason she can't make it then i guess we'll have to mm -hmm. figure out the training another time um but I mean, location wise yeah. i mean we can do it at city hall we can you know rent one of the rooms and have it where we do the meeting there and then we do i don't know some other type of excursion or something um as well but i think hybrid yeah. might be a little hard because then yeah. we have to have like zoom set up and we'd all have to like kind of talk at the computer but considering we'll have most only like i mean <laughs> andres wouldn't be able to make it anyways so we'd have True. maybe one or two folks that wouldn't be able to make it we might have to excuse them and and just do it in person. Um, that's my lean. Uh, do we know what um, Jack's availability is? Because it looks like he's yeah. remote for both of those days. 
Yeah, and Jack, I can I also guess... I can also reach out to Hannah Preston and see what her availability is for the tenth. If you don't mind, that would be great. Um, but and yeah, Jack, you were saying remote only. Um, were you saying were you meaning you could attend remotely, or was that uh, in place of unavailable? I I can I can Jack, we're having trouble hearing you. Yeah, we're trouble with my computer too. I'm sorry, Jack. I couldn't. I couldn't catch that. Um, Maybe if you put it in the chat, I think that would be better. We, yeah, we couldn't yeah. really make out a, a word that you said. D Dennis, do we um, do we have a location? Um, because if we need a location, I could ask at work. Um, measurements offices are on uh, Mara Street downtown about possibly using uh, our space at work. That I appreciate that, Jeff. That might be good to do. I guess it a little bit depends on sort of what our, yeah, what our schedule is. Okay, let's, let's I guess, go through that. Um, so, Jeff, you mentioned your, you might have a, a place. Um, Ideal mentioned she might have a place. Last year or last this January, we went to, or February, we went to um, uh, Northgate Park, right? Yeah. Um, and just did it outside, but that was because we had a meeting in the first half, all virtual. Um, not sure what the weather will be like. Um, Hannah, do you know um, if uh, if there's a specific, like, look, like, does there need to be AV requirement, like, um, ability for this? Uh, equity training. Not sure. You're muted. Hey, Dennis. I'm not sure. Um, I just thought I'd follow up. I already got a response from Hannah Preston. She will be mm -hmm. unavailable the weekend of the 10th, but is available the weekend of the 3rd. Okay, Jack, and we'll, if you don't mind sending in the chat, whether you're the third and the 10th were remote or unavailable. Uh, if we don't know, I guess, and you're saying we can use City Hall for the equity meeting, you know? Uh, I guess, I think the, the question maybe then is more, what do we wanna do for sort of our independent portion of the retreat? Maybe we decide that and then we decide a location kind of based on that. If we can swing. Sorry, where did you say, Jeff, your potential place was? Uh, Measurement Incorporated, our uh, headquarters on Mara Street, um, right in the Innovation District. Um, I'll check on both the 3rd and the 10th. I can check tomorrow with our facilities person to see if it would be OK. Um, trying not to toot our own horn, but, you know, we have a pool table there. We have a Pac-Man machine. We have a ping pong table. So it's kind of a fun space um if, oh, if i if but that's provided i can get it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you don't mind checking that would be great yeah just have yeah to I'll, I'll, I'll check tomorrow i i should probably know tomorrow or um thursday at the latest thanks jeff suzanne you were going to say some, uh Shmong. oh no i was just saying i'm in i, I like i like the space <laughs> oh you're in <laughs> Um, um yeah, so I might be able to offer my office space. The reason I mention that is because it's also the MPO's office space. Um, since I work for the regional council, um, we, we share an office space. Um, I will ask someone in, in case we need that as an option. The only catch is that it's not in downtown Durham. It's in RTP. Um, for folks that might not have access um, to a car that gets them to RTP, it is right along multiple bus lines. Um, but beyond that, um, can't hurt to ask. So I can I can offer that hat in the ring, so to speak. Thanks, Andres. Yeah, I think my lean is to stay, you know, in sort of the biking radius, so to speak. I agree. Um, yeah, make it more accessible. But maybe if we don't hear positively from other options, we can keep you in the back pocket, Andres, if you don't mind to ask. Absolutely, not a problem. Did the bike co-op mention at some point they have space too that people can use? 
I can't remember. I can't remember, honestly. Does that mean their shop in Duke Park? Maybe. I can't remember. I know somebody uh, came to... I was going to say, I feel like that would be kind of tight. There's normally not many tables or anything. It's, okay. it's a okay. pretty tight facility. They were When they did come, they said that they wanted to keep their space. Um, that was what like the letter of support was and everything, but um, I don't think it would be good for like brainstorming and like okay. you know right. sticky notes that type of thing. Okay, that's good to know. I, yeah, I don't know the space, so <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it does bring up the question of like what's the purpose of of our retreat? Which the sorry, Hannah, I keep asking because I don't know how long do we expect the equity training to take? Do we know? It was an hour and a half. Okay. In person, yeah. Okay. So that but, that, like, the, mm -hmm. but that was what she she thought that like kind of includes the Q and A time and discussion right. and everything. So right, could right. be yeah. shorter. So we can to probably do that. Join that with sort of move into lunch after that, and then do sort of a more casual activity together after lunch um, for folks who can stick around. Like so, we did the walk audit after lunch um, last um, February, and we could do something similar. So there's this sort of like it could be a walk audit, it could be just a, it could be a more casual version of a walk audit. We could just sort of do like a, a walk around a certain, a certain corridor. Um, if folks have ideas for what they'd like to do sort of for that sort of back half, the second half of the retreat, maybe we could discuss that and think about, yeah, do we want a place where we, like a, a table where we can all sit and work around or do we want to be up and out and outside and walking? Keep, keep in mind, February could be bad weather, could be very cold um, and stormy weather for, for outside. True. Yeah, we got kind of lucky last year. I was going to say, yeah, there's okay. always that one February weekend where it hits 75, so we might strike gold uh, two years in a row. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to, I think, like, if we have a space, we could kind of audible, it's, right. you know, it's not an official meeting, we can... If it's reading, we can choose to just sit in and chat. Um, so maybe having a hub that we have our um, our equity training at, have our lunch at, and then we can choose to uh, the option maybe to go outside and walk. So some like so you're mentioning like near downtown Durham, uh, Jeff would be I think a great location for that. Um, City Hall similarly. Um, Ideals location I think was a little further north. I don't remember exactly. Um, but um, and we don't have to decide exactly today for the retreat, but just have an idea. Go ahead. I was going to say, you can always rent space in the main library, too. They mm -hmm. have rooms that can hold up to 24 people. So nice. I didn't know that. Yeah. See, so after we read that, that book all together, Suzanne, uh, uh, Palaces for the People, a lot about libraries. I think we kind of read it. And I think our 2019 retreat was at one of the libraries, I can't remember which one, but. Um, this is Suzanne Walensky. Just as a newcomer, um, is there sort of like um, an overall uh, sort of theme for the retreat or it's just to get together? I know the F, the F, the um, equity training, I heard that for an hour and a half, but is there a sort of um, just to get together and, and um, consider what we're doing next year or is that the kind of the idea of it or yeah i think it's really to get together and talk about what we will do over the course of the year sorry i'm gonna have to move to the living room we're about to have a vacuum cleaning in this i'm at the leave work while dennis is moving i can share a little bit about previous retreats so it's really what you all as members want so it's you know whoever helps to plan that um it's really about what folks here want whether it's you know engaging previously we've had other commissions come and we talk with them had the office on youth come and we've learned more about what they're doing okay um, it's sort of just it's like a meeting but in person and extended and getting together in 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 person basically yes it, it exactly. could be anything okay all and right. figuring out priorities, kind of like Dennis mentioned, I think establishing what the priorities are going to be for each of the yeah. committees for the okay. year ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. It's hard in these virtual worlds, right? You've got to have some in-person connection to get to know one another. Sure. <laughs> Jeff, 
Jeff, how are the retreats with DOST? So you've done both BPAC and DOST. Are they structured similarly or? Um, yeah, they're, they're, um, they're structured pretty similarly. I mean, what um, they've done in the past, I haven't been on a retreat since I just re-upped on DOST a few months ago. But um, previous years when I was there, they were basically planning sessions where, um, you know, in a relaxed environment and kind of plan out um, thoughts and priorities for the following year um, in, a, in a more social setting than, you know, when we would meet in the committee room at City Hall. Yeah. And again, I think it's up to folks here what you want. Like in previous ones, we've had more technical retreats where folks from, you know, Pi and DevRev show how to how to do some of that for, for the rest of us who maybe are not as technically skilled in that. Um, like Dan said, we did a walk on it last year. So I think it's if you guys want to do something that's more application, you can. Or if you want to just have it be more social, you can. I think it's, it's just what what you all as the members want to have to kind of end the year and begin the new year. So this is Scott. One year, uh, I was on BPAC for several years earlier, and at least one year we had a guest speaker who came in and talked to us in person. Um, Mike Woodard was it, uh, the guest speaker one year. And another year we had a number of videos uh, that were about cycling and walking in some of the other big cities in the country and the world that do it well and just kind of give us some uh, stars to shoot for, um, you know, Brussels or Portland or wherever, Davis, California. And so, you know, I think we can get into the mode of, all right, let's just chunk along. We'll look at the DevRev plans. We'll look at the um, NCDOT and the city, you know, paving lists and, but you know, it's not very often that we really get to think out of the box. And so we use the retreat to kind of do that as opposed to just having like another meeting with sort of a similar agenda. We tried to um, make it into something a little bit bigger than that. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, I like that idea of sort of pulling in resources, um, things that we just, you know, outside of Durham, maybe, you know, looking around. Um, uh, I think when well, we don't have to decide today, I mean, we, this will be after the January meeting. Um, I think the main thing, I appreciate it, sort of folks starting to think about this. Um, yeah, go ahead, Susan. Yeah, I was just gonna say another thing I think I, I found personally helpful in some of the previous retreats is having, if they're able, some of the other folks from different commissions um, join us at least for a part of the retreat to share what the priorities are for some of those relevant commissions that you know there's some similar priorities just so we can maybe align and figure out potential budget asks that we want to align those kinds mm -hmm. of things yeah that's a great point i think maybe that's even something like <laughs> jeff have you all talked with or i guess dos meets after us right uh in the month like have you all talked about your retreat this upcoming um we we haven't uh, we've talked briefly about it it's going to be later in the year but i think you know i certainly can um you know mention it to dost folks um if you'd like to invite them um i mean it's not like the whole com commission is going to show up um mm -hmm. and there certainly is significant overlap between trails and bicycle and pedestrian issues um you know and that could be very good to have um input from you know, maybe um, uh, the Recreation Advisory Commission also is another one that comes to mind. Um, is a good fit for there's a lot of things we do that mesh together. And the environment one too. Yeah, my affairs. Ed, go ahead. I, yeah, just a thought with the equity training in the morning, perhaps the afternoon or after lunch, we could somehow do a session that ties in with the um, the topic of equity as it relates to um, bicycle pedestrian transit issues in Durham. Yeah, I don't I don't mind that idea at all. It's a great idea. I think I mean it's something we talk a little bit. There's a lot of ways you can I think take that equity discussion and sort of apply it to what we to, to how we could you know something we could talk about or, or do. One thing that does come to mind is potentially visiting 
some of these sort of historically black neighborhoods that we've we, we were not far. I mean, North Roxboro we did last year was it's not far from Bragtown, but we haven't. I don't. We could go further north. I know the hate just after Fayetteville Street and the sort of CMAC bike lane um, project sort of debacle there. Uh, potentially looking through like looking at Haytai and seeing if we can sort of observe maybe more intimately like the things that Durham could do better and sort of could do to help repair some of its sort of uh, its the harms that have been caused to a lot of these communities um, over recent sort of decades. But that is a good idea. It gets me thinking a little bit. Um, yeah, and if you're, I mean, and I'm not like, if folks have ideas for like, oh yeah, like we never talk about this neighborhood, right? Or this area of Durham that seems like in kind of our um, day to day might be underrepresented. Uh, it's also worth bringing up and maybe we'll, we could start like a document or something to kind of pull together a few of these ideas to kind of get a th two or three down, maybe um, solidified by next meeting, including if we wanna reach out to folks on other commissions um or compile like resources in other ways um yeah i mean maybe i don't know but maybe even like having um <laughs> lauren's here i'm gonna like throw it in there lauren maybe you know our new vision zero coordinator maybe like having uh having them be able to join us and uh it's not of course a requirement but if it happens to be convenient that would be a cool thing i think that we'd really love to have um and we could talk about maybe in a more casual environment maybe we won't have so much time to do so in january at our january meeting but uh maybe we could sort of talk about what we could do to help progress vision zero in durham how you can use us you know to make sure that you're getting as much done as you possibly uh, can um brian gives me a thumbs up on that um and yeah oh yeah mary rose mentions that as well if Lauren would like to join um and yeah and Mary Rose is, is keeping me on the ball time wise we should wind this down um but I, uh, I yeah go ahead Anna. I will say we do the one point that I wanted to touch on before we wrapped the next section is in-person meeting schedule that's something okay. we've thrown out for uh, several months and if it's something that we would want to do I think it'd be good to talk through and kind of figure it out before the new year starts. Um, and Brian date? just said, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do we need to vote on the date? It was Brian's question in the chat. Um, I don't think we do. It's not an official meeting. That's my, at least, I mean, Suzanne, maybe you, I don't think we did last time. Uh, okay. uh, we, we didn't we vote on the date. <laughs> no. Yeah. So I think February 10th for me is, 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 is right now it, but maybe we should just confirm Hannah, if you don't mind with um, persons doing the equity training. Mm -hmm. And if, if they can do the 10th, let's do the 10th. If not, let's offer the third. Okay. Um, any objections, like any any issues with that? Sorry, Andres, I know that, that leaves you out of the loop. No, that's all good. I I um I did just want to mention that that doesn't work for Hannah and I. And then I didn't, I wasn't sure whether um we got a response from Jack on um which of those dates between the two works better because he he was um one of the other remote onlys for both of those dates yeah jack were you maybe you can hear you now. if you don't mind unmuting we might try to hear you now or perhaps commenting in the chat still muted jack mm -hmm. I, I think he's having a hard time finding out how to unmute no worries. Okay. Well, we'll we'll pause on you, Jack. We'll uh you can feel free to throw it in the chat and we can sync up over email too. Um so yeah, Hannah, to your question about um so I think the 10th and the third in that order are our priorities. Um we'll have lunch included, I believe is the usual way that goes. Um so we'll figure out what the orders are for folks uh by in January. Um the in-person meeting schedule, yeah. So I guess um, the dates, sorry, do you have a, the dates like available easily, Hannah, or should we, if, if folks, do folks have any issues with the sort of dates we looked at last month? Uh, first of all, I think that's the first thing to just make sure we're on the same page about, right? 
It's on the website right now. And I thought we had confirmed that that was the schedule. I sent it to the city That's right. already. Um, right, right, right. Cool. Great. I'll share my screen. But um, yeah, what do folks think about doing an in-person meeting? Um, and this is, you know, uh, maybe like a quarterly, maybe like the March, it would be like a kind of March, um, June, September, December, or something like that, right? Um, I like quarterly for that? us. I think that's a good um, cadence. Do you know, Hannah, if we could just use a meeting room in the city hall, like? I think that's how all the other commissions do it. But could we, yeah, we can kind of book it ad hoc or? No, we would have to um, tell the city clerk and the county um, in advance. Um, so they were able to like publish it. But I mean, we could if it is like a month out, but they did ask like the full year's schedule because they wanted to kind of be able mm -hmm. to publish if it's in person or online. So, um, mm -hmm. Nathan also, uh, just likes the quarterly as well. I guess I, the, the thing to be key here about is like, these will be normal meetings and that people will be required to attend in the same manner that they would virtual meetings. Do folks have a concern with being able to make these in-person meetings um, if it's in City Hall, for example? I think it's good to do um, quarterly. Uh, that's what uh, DOST is planning on doing is uh, I don't know like which month each quarter, but, um, you know, one in-person meeting, because I think there's uh, especially when you start getting new people rolling on. To the commission um there's mm -hmm. a great benefit in some face-to-face -face contact yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm for it too i mean in in, in principle um and you know and, and and prior to covid um you know all the meetings of all the commissions were in right. person so it's not like we're asking people mm -hmm. to do something that's never been asked before for the hist uh, other than the last three years three or four years the history of all the commissions has been all the meetings were in person. You didn't have um, a remote option. Sure. Yeah. Ed raised his hand. And Suzanne as well. Maybe Ed, do you sure. want to go first? Yeah. Ed, where, did you have your hand raised or was that from before? That was unintentional if it went up. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Suzanne, go ahead. So sh thanks. Um, yeah, I think um, I think the idea of getting together in person is a really good one, also, and I think it just helps with <laughs> cohesion. Just to you know, know people face to face. Um, the only thing that I thought of um, when you were talking, like at the last meeting, about starting to to meet in person again. Um, after COVID, I thought, wow, we're just going into COVID flu and cold season right now, you know, um, at this time of the year. So I, I would think that possibly if you wanted to avoid in-person meetings that might be, you know, during this, the cold and flu season, basically, and COVID season, and um, that's seasonal. And and then, um, you know, when, when, the, when the weather's warmer and it's uh, nicer and everything to to meet, but that's just, uh, you know, just a, just a stray thought. That's all. But um, I like the idea very much of getting together. Yeah, that's a good point, Suzanne. Um, I think that also makes sense in terms of timing. Uh, no need to force it in January and February. We're meeting in February in person anyways. Um, maybe we start in March or April and then we go yeah, uh, kind of perfect. quarterly from there. I think too. Right. The last meeting, there was some thought that let's let the days get a little bit longer. Um, to if folks mm -hmm. are going to bike or walk or, yeah, true. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so I guess what do folks think about um, the sort of March, June, September, maybe setting those three. Excuse not me, just say what Nathan December. put in the chat: April, mm -hmm. June, and September, and that way it's a little bit warmer and lighter. <laughs> 
Yeah. March, June, and September also works though. But I was thinking um if it's possible, I don't know if this is possible, but to have them be earlier, um, just because it takes me like 25 to 30 minutes to bike to um city hall so or yeah city hall or wherever we do meeting um so if it ends at nine i would prefer to not be biking in the dark it's kind of late to bike yeah well the good thing is uh mary i live over where you do so would be true. kind of biking the same direction that's what dale said in the past since every meeting was always in person he said um, he took the American Tobacco Trail with a big group of people typically home and people would kind of shoot their own ways and it'd be dark, but when you're kind of together. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's, I think that the time is also to make sure that folks can make the meeting in for other work hour issues, right? So it's a tough, I'm guessing we, we also technically are committed to these times. We'd have to ask for the sort of, <clears throat> But it sort of changed through the city clerk, I believe. Um, might be worth further discussion, but do folks have a thought between maybe April, June, and September? Yeah, I like that schedule. Sounds good to me. Because we are meeting in February, so it gives us another kind of a little bit more of a two months. We don't have to see each other for two months. Um, all right. I'm I, right. I don't know if we have to vote on this, but I, I think it might be worth just kind of voting just for the sake of like being on the same page. I don't want folks who didn't, this is important for our sort of operations, right? So uh, if folks are willing- I'll, I'll make a motion. A motion yeah. I'll make a motion that we have our April, June and September meetings in person. I second. Second. And th this is it. I want to just, just throw it maybe, maybe with- further consideration of moving it to say six o'clock to eight o'clock rather than seven mm -hmm. to nine if if that's possible i think that that's worth further discussion or consideration or possibly six thirty to eight thirty mm -hmm. yeah i think we can maybe to january we should talk about that um with that consideration i'm taking those into the motion that was put forward um all in favor of April, June, and September meetings being in person with a potential time change. Uh, aye. 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 Cool. See all eyes. Um, all opposed? Not hearing. Not seeing anything. All right. Thanks, everyone. That'll be exciting. Um, slowly. Uh, I think it'll be a, a good sort of boon to, to the commission as well to, to keep working together. All right. Moving forward. Thanks all. That was kind of the <clears throat> chunkier stuff to get through, so to speak. Uh, committee reports. Uh, Suzanne, if you don't mind. This will be a quick one. We did not meet in December, so uh, we'll pick it back up in January. But just another plug for the committee. Some of the things we've worked on in the past year are include the walk audit, uh, working with the Healthy Mile Trail to do some markings and hopefully some more uh, cleanup and markings this coming year, as well as um, hopefully collaborating more with some of the uh, bike to school <clears throat> events with Bike Durham and helping to support that and possibly doing a bicycle helmet grant again once that's released. So, um, and folks can certainly figure out some other priorities to focus on for the year ahead. But uh, again, would love to find a, a new chair. So, and possibly a co chair model. So, if anybody's interested, let us know. <clears throat> uh, Scott, Deborah. Yeah, thank you. So it Deborah, we had four site plans or development plans to go through. Uh, the first one was called Sunrock Camden and Landon covered this. It was a Rev3, and this one was really sort of uninteresting. It's a combination of two industrial lots so that a concrete company can move their concrete in a part of their factory from one part to the other. It's on, I don't remember the road, but there's very little road frontage. There's really nothing we can ask for. There's no pedestrian activity or anything. So we, we've we seen this one two other times and there's not much we can do about it. Uh, so the other three are more interesting. Uh, Landon covered another one called Hub RTP Horseshoe Commons Building. 
And this one was actually a site plan and it's in the RTP area bounded by I-40, Davis Drive and 54, what used to be for those of us who've been in RTP for a while, the governor's um, in complex. And it's a big um, multi-use facility and it's going to have you know residential, commercial, um, retail and so on. And this was just one of the buildings there and it's already well in uh, construction phase. In fact, this was a site plan. I'm not even sure why we're seeing it. Uh, Landon's comments were that it's the most uh, comprehensive and complete um, plan that we've ever looked at and incorporated yeah. all kinds of bike and pet amenities to start with everything from uh, sidewalks and um, uh, ball bouts for curbs and um, bike parking, covered bike parking in the parking deck and so on. So this one there wasn't really much to comment on. I mean, we may have had one or two comments, but um, basically they did a fantastic job uh, implementing this. And um, so we were giving them a lot of credit for the job they had done. Uh, the next plan was called Sharon Grove. And it's one of many that we've seen on Sharon Road recently. Brian um, got this one and it was our first revision. And it's uh, three lots that are being combined for 24 acres. It's roughly halfway between US 70 and 98, and it's adjacent to another neighborhood called Brightwood Trails. So this 24 acres is gonna be um, up to 120 units and up to 80 townhomes. Um, and so there are already some facilities on Sharon Road, but we asked for a bike lane and multi-use path. And we also asked for connections to the adjacent neighborhood. There are some internal uh, roads or streets there that have like uh, dead end connections, whatever that this new development will be able to connect to. And we want to make sure they include uh, bike and ped connections as long as, as well as just the streets. And finally, there's a Lick Creek Greenway that's in the CTP that we, it's not directly nearby, but we wanted to uh, flag that and ask for space to be left so that at some point access can be provided to that greenway. And the last one that we looked at was called Brickworks and Marissa covered this one, uh, also revision one. It's 95 acres and it's between like 147, 885 and US 70. So it's in an area that uh, is really kind of popped up now that 885 has been completed. Uh, it's going to have 1,800 multifamily units on 95 acres. And there wasn't a lot of uh, detail in the plan other than they showed the perimeter of the lot and where the first uh, two villages are going to go. And so it will be done over phases as you might expect for 1,800 units. Uh, it's bounded by Anger, Hoover, East End, and uh, sort of by US 70, near US 70. So all of those, we asked for multi-use paths and uh, on a couple of them, we asked for bike lanes, I guess, Anger and East End and a little road called Rowena. Uh, there's also a multi-use path planned along US 70 and we asked for a connection to that. And there's a city park named CR Woods Park uh, that is just across the street on East End and we asked for a connection to that. Uh, so the um, developer also already committed to make 5,000 feet of internal trails. So they're already, you know, planning within the development to have, you know, internal facilities. Um, but that's the one commitment that had already been made. So those are the highlights. Uh, we, you know, just give you, again, a snapshot of the big things that are going on in Durham, all the units and the kind of the hot places where stuff is uh, being developed. And uh, we've already got, I think, two more development plans uh, for next month. So we'll be jumping on those. And that's it. Unless uh, Brian or Marissa or Landon have any other comments that I missed. We also just got in three more cases yesterday. So I'll be uh, emailing those out. <laughs> Sounds good. Mm. Thanks, Anna. All right, back to you, Dennis. Thanks, Scott. Great work on that commission committee. Um, Landon says that the plan that they were talking about uh, should be used for as a model for future planning. Maybe we should print it out and bring it to the retreat so we can take a look, all of us, uh, or just a copy of it. I'm curious 
um, to see. I haven't looked at that one. Don't don't try to download it. <laughs> my one, it, it like I have fiber optic internet. It took me an hour and a half. That like they they decided to make it the largest like digital file in history. But I, I still have it. So okay, yeah. Maybe, if maybe that's you'll... something we want to look at, just let me bring it. Okay. Yeah, and give you a, give you a week to print it or something. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Dennis, could I say something about that? Oh yeah, Heidi, go ahead. Yeah, I just um, I I I I just want to ex express excitement for hearing how uh, strong the the commitments are for the hub RTP uh, plan, and you know that's solely in the county. If you all really, I was just reading the chats. You know, if you think that this should be a model for future planning, it might be something you would want to consider sending the county commission, you know, an email sort of praising um, the hub RTP plan and just raising it to our, so that we will all know that you all think this is great. I think that's a good idea. Because I mean... we wouldn't Sorry. probably know, we, we have expressed as a, you know, board of county commissioners that we uh, would like to see a prioritization for biking and pedestrians and, and making sure that that's safety, that there's a safety around that, um, deprioritize cars, good transit, all that within RTP. And especially as RTP is redeveloping itself, um, you know, the county gave them $20 million. Yeah. And so they do listen to 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 what, what we value. So it'd be great for us to hear that, wow, they're really doing this, you know, that our citizen BPAC committee thinks they're doing a great job. That'd be great. Maybe not to call you out, Landon, but maybe you, you could write up a kind of just a, a no, list of I, things. No, I can. No, 100%. That'd be great. That's no problem. That'd be great. And then I can, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll clear it through our, through our committee and then we can, we can kind of send it. That'd be, that'd be totally, totally great. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Happy, happy to co-sign that, especially if you write it. Yeah, and we, we still haven't <laughs> submitted the comments to the developer uh, in the planning department. So maybe we can submit it to them. They can and go hand also... in glove. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, cool. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Heidi. That's a great idea. Um, Dennis, if I could add one other comment regarding the RTP development, uh, depending on how much we want to focus on RTP uh, as as a BPAC, um, I know that the RTP Foundation has their own planner. Um, I'm not sure what the value add would be there of a, uh, looping them in on a meeting and having them present sort of their their grander vision for the um, for RTP, uh, given just how integral it is to Durham it's a um, it's neighboring Durham it's in Durham County um a lot of our residents live there uh and or work there and mm -hmm. so um that could be a possibility for a speaker uh next year I'm not sure if Hannah has connects there or if anyone else does uh but I just thought I'd throw that idea out good idea it's That's maybe just idea. looping them in if we send this, have this plan, it's a good sort of discussion starter to talk about RTP more generally. I agree. Uh, is it Travis Creighton? Is that the mm -hmm. name of the planner there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's pretty active, I think. So, I mean, it'd be good to hear. Yeah, loop him in. I think we haven't, I don't think we've ever talked to him on BPAC that I'm aware of. Um, uh, so that's a great idea, Andres. Yeah, maybe uh, something I'm writing down. Um, Landon and and DevRev folks, when those comments are together, just bring it back to the commission. And let's you know to sort of throw it by Travis and and use that to maybe ask him to to talk to us sometime in uh, maybe February, or March, or something. All right. Actually, <clears throat> let me just say one more thing about Rickworks, and just to make it clear that we're covering that too so it also had four bus stops that were nearby so this one sort of like mm -hmm. hit all the, you know touched all the bases and so marissa um you know identified the bus stops and uh you know we put requests in for them too so anyway just uh, that's one yeah. other thing dev rev is, is looking at yeah i appreciate that i think that's something that wasn't always consistently checked like a year ago on that road, like how many bus stops and where like make that that's just really important. Thanks for for checking that, Marissa. <clears throat> all right. If that's all for 
that uh, DevRev discussion all. So we don't have Mike Shepard here with us. I'll just do a quick mm. summary of the Pi meeting and folks who are there can supplement me if I forget something. But we mostly talked about the UDO recommendations. Um, that process, <clears throat> trying to kind of get to a finalized version of those is I think the goal so that we can vote on it, have something in hand that the, that we can really like push, kind of use that to push both <clears throat> with with sort of players in city and also um, the contractor. Uh, I So we talked about it. We have a good sort of, um, I think, short list that I'm planning to reorganize for the January meeting um, and then of the UDO recommendations. And then uh, I have emailed the contractor. They haven't gotten back to me. So now it's getting a little, gonna have to reach out to them again and make sure that we don't, we're not falling out of the loop. I'm, I'm gonna wait the, for the holidays and, and ping them again in, in January. Um, <clears throat> I think that's all on the UDO. I mean, there's a lot of detail in there, but uh, you folks, hopefully folks, most folks have seen that document. And if not, we'll see it as a commission, uh, hopefully in January. Um, and then we talked about, what was the other thing we talked about? Oh yeah, 2024. So actually one of the things that came out of that was, what do we wanna do in 2024 uh, as a pie committee specifically? And uh, I think we, we kind of settled on a lot of things that we cared about uh, needed design guidelines, right? Something that, uh, like, could we see, like, we kind of kept referencing uh, Raleigh's, uh, they have a design guideline document that shows, like, oh, this is how a good uh, neighborhood street or a good sort of, um, through, you know, two lane, a good three lane street, uh, and sort of different um, cross sections of those streets so that we can give those, I mean, even in DevRed, they'd be useful, but especially to, like, city plans um, <clears throat> to start having some things that we can show like, oh, this is what a raised crosswalk should look like. This is what curb radii should be in a more sort of visual way. So I think one project we're hopefully gonna dive into on Pi is to <clears throat> actually start compiling things that we think we'd like to see in a Durham design guideline. And that's gonna be a longer term thing and, and just uh, kind of slowly figure that out. But um, Brian Taylor was there. Um, and Pine, I think he has a lot of ideas for it too. So we'll, we'll hopefully be collaborating with the staff folks like Hannah and Brian. Um, but that's a good project, I think, for Pi, among the many other things that will come up, of course. Um, I think that's most of what we talked about. If the folks who were there have anything to add, mm -hmm. Mary, Nathan, I think that was all pretty much right. Okay. Thanks. Um, so Javier is not here. It sounds like she wanted to come but wasn't able to. Um, we will, well, I'll say just for the recording, thanks, Javier. We really appreciate, I've appreciated personally all the work you've been doing and, and sort of your work with um, with BPAC. Uh, I don't know how long you've been the, the liaison, but for the whole time I've been here for sure. Um, and hopefully we'll have a chance to see you uh, again, um, maybe at a future meeting to, to tell to you in person, but thank you. And uh, we'll hear if there are any updates, I guess in January from city council. Um, and then Heidi, yeah, with the county, do you have any updates for us? Really have any county news that's relevant to BPAC or any updates um, other than to just ask if you all are aware of the uh, the things called Destination 2055, um, the new plan for the development of the, mm -hmm. the MTP for our region, along with the capital area metro Politan Planning Organization and our own DCHC MPO. Um, there's a survey that's live now and through maybe January 10th that everyone could um, fill out and let them know what your goals and objectives are for you know, a large plan for the area related to roadways and transit and rail and bike and pedestrian infrastructure. I could put a um, link in the chat. Yeah. I didn't know whether you all already know about this or if this is news. I don't have the link. So if you have it, that'd be great. Um, all right. I'll put the link in the chat. Thanks. And we can. Maybe, that's, but that's uh, really all for me tonight. Okay. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll make a note to email the link out to after the meeting. If you can put it in the chat, I can copy it from there. Um, all right. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, Nathan with Duke. Any updates? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Duke has shared the results of their two surveys with internal researchers and advocates. Um, 
the bike ped map results from the survey from Alta is still live. You can see it on the same place where you were able to fill it out before. Um, we haven't received any report or list of recommendations from them yet, and they have 12 days left until the year is over. So I don't think they're going to meet their deadline. Um, also, there's a group of students at Duke called Our Urban Future who are getting more and more active trying to put pressure on the university to do better. Um, they, after the Duke, one of the official Duke accounts posted an Instagram post that seemed a little victim blaming about um, bike safety, they went out and created a protest uh, bike lane down Campus Drive, extending it out to the five foot uh, requirement from minimum requirement for a permanent bike lane according to the Federal Highway Administration and using like a handmade stencil to repaint some sharrows on the road and like chalk paint um, so that they wouldn't get in trouble um, where the university had removed the sharrows. Uh, they've also been trying to get Duke during the pandemic got rid of its bike share program. Actually, that was pre-pandemic and it got rid of the C3 bus route, which went from East Campus to Science Drive and they got rid of their enterprise car share, and they've been getting rid of curb cuts for unfathomable reasons. Um, and so the Our Urban Future students are trying to get things going. They have created a bunch of stickers, and they have a whole campaign plan that they've put on pause since nobody's on campus right now. Um, and they're scheduling meetings with like all the higher-ups that they can to start off nice be like hey you're doing it bad um they wouldn't say that they would say hey these things could be improved and make duke better and then if that doesn't work they would start going into you're doing it bad uh but mm -hmm. that's what's going on at duke thanks nathan yeah maybe maybe our urban future maybe those folks should come to be back sometime maybe we could talk with them <clears throat> interesting uh dennis i have a presentation in like 15 minutes you're gonna love just based on that comment right. okay then i'll i'll pause there no need to spoil that royal anything with, with north carolina central uh nothing uh to report no it is thanks Roy. sounds good let us know if there's anything you think you see that oh yeah we can help out with so um, but <clears throat> the discussion for uh, the retreat too. I mean, a lot of stuff happened at the universities that we can start to engage with more. Ah, sorry, I think I, I'm encroaching on Andres. Uh, Jeff, anything with DOST? Uh, nothing to report. DOST uh, last meeting was focused on open space. Just let us know when they get to trails. <laughs> All right, thanks, Jeff. Uh, any other community updates? Landon has his hand raised. Oh, yeah. Good. Thanks, Landon. Go ahead. I, I, I actually had a question for Royal. Um, has, has, has NCCU or, or, or anyone there been engaged with the city on the, um, the planned and, uh, and I think agreed to changes uh, for Fayetteville Street that, I mean, cut right through the middle of campus? I know that the if you look at some of the, the the overhaul of Fayetteville Street, which is like a big city project, they had like a lot of the sidewalks along that main corridor have been designated for multi-use paths. And you know, I, I know a ton. I live close to there, so I know a ton of people fly through there that don't need to be. Um, but I have no idea if, if anyone at NCCU is engaged in that process, or if there's if there's any sort of like timeline update. I know that. Maybe the NCDOT putting the kibosh on some of the updates on Payable Street kind of may have delayed that, but I, I have no idea if you have any insight there or not. I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah, I have no insight, and, uh, and nothing's come across my desk. I'm pretty in touch with the uh, facilities folks and the the folks in. Um, uh, sorry, my my cat. Sorry, guys. Uh, it, nothing's come across my desk yet so far. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Royal. Thanks, Landon. Good question. Yeah, I think maybe, yeah, Fable's a hot space, obviously, in terms of like <laughs> infrastructure. Um, something that we can do is like, as we write letters or have thoughts about Fable, we can loop uh, the folks at 
NCCU in and see if they can second our, or, you know, if they agree with our opinions, um, it'd be good to hear that, what they think. All right, any other community updates? Okay, I'm gonna share my screen, move forward to the uh, presentation topics. So we know January, we're gonna have uh, Shane, Shane, right? Shane from Raleigh, um, who's going to talk about the efforts they've been doing um, to kind of a lot of sort of spot safety projects through NCDOT, just kind of um, incremental changes they've been doing in Raleigh to improve um, pedestrian and cyclist safety. Uh, it's kind of been part of their Vision Zero efforts, and I think it'll be a good meeting to coincide with sort of talking more with Lauren, um, our new Vision Zero coordinator. So that's January, but we don't have, I don't think, anything planned for the following months. Um, we mentioned Travis Creighton, actually, from RTP. That's something that I will note, and we can add to this list. Um, I know uh, Ed had mentioned a while back the ADA Accessible Trails uh, in Fayetteville. Um, that's something that maybe we should follow up on and see if there's someone from there that comes to mind. But any other um, suggestions for possible topics or any of these you think are worth prioritizing for February, March? Does anyone have a contact with Fayetteville regarding the accessible trails? Good question. That was, Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say that was a an article that I believe Ed had seen. Um, and me, we talked about, oh, you saw it. Okay. I remember we talked about it in the Triple E. Yeah. I, I don't know that I have a contact necessarily, but I'm totally fine with doing a I don't know if there's anybody mentioned in the article. It's been a while since I looked at it. If there's anybody noted in the mm -hmm. article for a contact, but if that's something I, that people are, are interested, I'm happy to do a cold outreach. I know some folks too with the um, parks um, in Fayetteville. So I could also see if um, um, if that might be a, a potential way in, if that works, Suzanne. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Um... I could see us wanting to coordinate with downtown Durham Incorporated sooner rather than later. Um, if we want, if we'd want to fit that in for the spring, that just uh, pops to me as something where we would want to be aligned with them or at, at the very least sort of see what their priorities are and see where we fit in, in that plan and vice versa. Mm. Good idea. Okay. That's good to know. I think, do we have any, does anyone know, who would be the contact for that downtown Durham mass plan? I really don't know about that. I have a contact with downtown Durham. Maybe Hannah, we could send them an email or just, mm -hmm. or you can let mm -hmm. us know their email and we can send it from BPAC, whatever you prefer. Okay. Yeah, that works. I've noted, yeah. Great. I, think, I think we need to give her a couple of months to get her feet under her, but I would like to hear from our Vision Zero coordinator. I think that's spot on. I, I think we'll have, yeah, I think t January will be like, like a little warm up in terms of we'll talk with Raleigh and and maybe it'll be a discussion about what we can do in Durham with regards to that. Um, but yeah, it's a good idea. I think, Lauren, I, I think you're still online. If you are still online, feel free to just, anytime you're available, we'll be available. Uh, and you don't have to have all the answers. We can, uh, we can talk to you at any point. Um, we'd be happy to. But it could always also be maybe the April like in person meeting since she works with the city now. Know, Great just idea. a thought. Yeah. Great idea. And and Lauren says, I'm here for it via the QA. Sounds great. Uh April, yeah, April sounds great. Let's let's, let's pencil it in. Um one other thing I'll mention here is uh Elise Keith from uh the uh, she works with the Vision Zero organization at UNC. Uh, what do they call it? The Highway Transit or Highway Safety? I forget that's the full name. But uh, she organizes the sort of statewide Vision Zero initiative a little bit that they're going that they're um, handling. And she had some ideas for cross commission connections. I haven't followed up with her on that, but maybe in the coming months that would be something we could try to. That's that's what Fayetteville made me think of that. I think they might have a commission there as well. And I know Suzanne Schmall and I, we spoke with Winston-Salem a while back. Uh, we probably should reach out to them again and see how they're doing. Um, the Winston-Salem BPAC, I mean. Uh, so cross-commission communication. 
would be interesting. Dennis, this is Ed. I wanted to share that at a Durham Paratransit Task Force meeting last week, I learned that um, the microtransit program um, that there, there are zones in North Durham and East Durham. Um, I think some substantial changes to that, if not uh, the cancellation of that um, program is looming. I think the current contract uh, runs out the end of June and they're looking at alternatives. It, it hasn't been working out economically, I guess. Um, so maybe an update, you know, as we get closer to June from someone, I believe it's it's that's run by Go Triangle, um, but it mm. might be worth having somebody come in and share about what's going on with the microtransit program. And that sounds like a sooner rather than later, probably if it's a time crunched uh, situation. Go Triangle microtransit. Do you have a contact there, or should we? I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, Brian, Brian Fahey, who I guess is the, I think he's titled the mobility coordinator with the transportation department. Um, uh, I can reach out to him and um, find out if who the appropriate person would be to come and speak about it. Yeah, that'd be great to, to I think I'm for that. That sounds uh, important and time sensitive. So. If you don't mind reaching out to Brian Fahey, we can uh, follow up with him. Or if if you'd like someone else to reach out, just just send us, let us know. I'll, I'll reach out to him. Sure. Okay. Thanks. That and great. if if you'll include me on the email chain, because um, I can always help make sure that okay. happens. Will do. Great. So we'll have uh, downtown Durham. We'll reach out to the D downtown Durham master plan folks. Uh, go triangle microtransit through Brian. Uh, maybe see if we have a contact at Fayetteville um, as well. Any other presentation topic ideas or priorities? Yeah, this is Scott. I just feel like I'm should be knowledgeable, and I'm not in projects that are happening in Durham and you know kind of what the status is i was asked uh at the recent uh, bike durham event if i you know what the status on hillendale road project was like mm -hmm. i have no idea but you know this is a the forum where i'd like to have some regular uh presentation or information about you know hillendale road and austin avenue and Pettigrew. i think there's supposed to be something planned there the Durham Rail Trail and its connection to the Tobacco Trail. Um, Maureen Road has some construction going on, I think starting next year. And uh, connection from the Tobacco Trail to the R. Kelly Bryant Bridge. I mean, there's just, there are all these projects that are in various states of either planning or hopefully near construction. And I just feel like, you know, this is where we all should be learning about those and kind of getting, you know, keeping up to date on what's happening with them. And I don't, you know, maybe they're being discussed at PI, um, but I don't think you should have to be at the PI meetings in order to kind of hear about these big ticket items like this. So I don't know who we ask is kind of the point about, you know, uh, providing this these kinds of presentations, or even if it's just come in for 15 minutes, you know, or whatever, it doesn't have to be a big presentation, just give a, a, an update. I just, uh, I'm, I'm sort of searching for how do we get that information to our commission, because I think it's important. Yeah, great. That's great. great idea. Yeah, I love the like, if more than because the problem right now, as you're kind of alluding to is like, we ask somebody to come and update us on a specific plan. And it's a 45 minute presentation, right? I mean, it'd be something if, if we could keep in touch with the folks, like to hear how the updates are going throughout the course of the year, um, to how the projects are going um, with shorter updates, that would be interesting. Is that a planning department question? Do you know, Hannah, if there's It'd like somebody transportation, it's hard because I mean, a lot of these projects are under public works or general services or transportation. Um, and so it's a lot of different people are managing these projects. But I mean, honestly, even for myself to wrap my head around everything, I think having yeah, some type of update would be good. Maybe it could even be like a quarterly update or something. I don't know. Email. Mm -hmm. I, that was going to be my suggestion. 
I know that like all of these different projects that Scott had mentioned kind of falls under bicycle and pedestrian. Um, and maybe we'll get an idea from our new Vision Zero coordinator. But is that kind of the pur is that one of the purposes of that position is to kind of push ball forward on development of transit oriented things? And if that's the case, then maybe that can be like a quarterly update for VPAC that that person could provide, but I, I have no idea if that's even in their purview. Well, I mean, some of them are like the rail trail and the connection yeah. from the back of trail to it and to the or Kelly, Kelly Bryant Bridge. I mean, that probably parks and rec. So, but then some of these projects like Hillendale Road or Maureen Road, I don't know whether that's general services or transportation or somebody in planning. I mean, I, I feel like just, every other month, you know, maybe we should have somebody or once a year or twice a year or whatever, somebody from these various groups that can talk about whichever parts of those they're responsible for. And so um, I don't, I don't think it's one person, but I don't know who those people are. It, I don't mind this idea of like, well, just, it just occurred like thinking about the in-person April meeting, you know, maybe we'll have Lauren talk then with us then maybe we can sort of connect with the city folks to come at our in-person meetings, which will presumably be in, in city hall, just kind of this chance to like, like we're meeting in person quarterly, we're kind of getting an update from them quarterly as well, so to speak. Um, but I just, yeah, I'll second the problem uh, that Aspen also mentions, I'll, I'll say it out loud, the question she asks or says here, here, I'd love some way to get regular updates on projects around town. Uh, I asked, way to go Durham, if they could include that in their monthly newsletter. And they said that wasn't the focus of their newsletter. So that's um, Aspen's also on board for this sort of, I think it is a problem of like, it's a lot of different departments with a lot of different projects, but I mean, you know, even if it's just Hannah, I mean, we could even start with like Hannah and Brian. I know uh, you all know what's going on in your purview, at least, and like getting, giving you all minutes, a few minutes of every meeting or every couple of meetings to kind of go over at least your um, scope that you're aware of. That could be useful to start and then starting to loop in Parks and Rec and other other folks. Um, uh, so on the website for most of these projects, where if you can find them, it lists who the project manager is. Um, so at something like a pie meeting, we could just assign projects to different B packers, and their job is basically just to harass David Cates for an update once a quarter or so, and just like. Like not a big ask, just like, hey, David, can you send me a paragraph summary of what's the status of design services for Hillendale Road sidewalk and bicycle facilities, SW4060? And mm -hmm. then could just read that and not have to like not have to have David Cates come out and talk to us for a while about it. Just a B packer reads yeah. an email. There's definitely a role for Pi to play here, I think. I'm gonna write this down for our next Pi meeting to discuss as well. Like, is there a way we can keep the connection alive with each of these sort of managers of, of each of the projects? Um, Scott's good point. For the sake of time, we should move on, but um, any anything that you think that we can action on that um, immediately? S Suzanne and Jeff have their hands up, but mm -hmm. um, we are close on time. I just go ahead, Suzanne, up. Jeff, and I'll, yeah, and then we'll move on to. I'll uh, keep it brief. Um, so one thought was I was going to mention what you did, Dennis, in terms of I think, you know, Hannah and Brian are, are you know, continual touch points here. Maybe they could at least help educate us on some kind of ongoing basis and <sighs> keep it narrower in scope. And then um, I, I can't remember, what is Leslie Tracy's role? I didn't know if Leslie Tracy could be brought in again. It seems like that might be something she can help update us on as well. Mm -hmm. She's um, an engineer. Yeah, she does yeah. tend to know, I think, a lot about all the projects. Uh, yeah. Um, and then uh, not related to this, but I think it's a great idea. I think it would be helpful to at least know updates on, I mean, not everything, but at least some things at least would be helpful. Um, but the other item for a present future presentation it might also be helpful to hear about the participatory budgeting process that just happened and any projects that align with BPAC mm -hmm. and where there might be some ways to coordinate around that or at least learn um, and help in whatever ways we can. And Suzanne, I've got a connection in that, um, in the participatory budget committee, in case we want to have one of their folks over to 
chat with us. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I've written that down as well. We can keep track of that. Um, see if there's something we can connect with there. Jeff, did you have something? You yeah, just, just very quickly. Um, I don't know if the policy has changed since my first stint on on BPAC, but um, you know, when I first was on here, we were um, informed that um, if commissioners were going to contact city staff, that uh, we needed to include Dale McKeel on uh, on those emails. So he was in the loop. So I I don't know if that's changed. But you know, keep um, Hannah in the loop there, and and I'm sure Nathan was being a little whimsical. You know, we certainly don't want to harass um, city staff, and and I know you just used that that word there, but uh, I think really important that um, Hannah be kept in the loop whenever we're contacting as individual commissioners, um, city employees. Great point. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a good point. I meant to try to say, instead of harassing, do it once a quarter, but I just smashed the two sentences in my head together and said, harass him once a quarter. <laughs> we'll keep it up. We'll keep ourselves up to date uh, uh, appropriately. Okay. Thanks all. Let's move on. Um, but this is a live topic and something for the retreat too, because it's kind of procedural almost, right? How do we stay on top of the things that matter? Um, I will go brief through my what I wanted to talk about with the North Roxburgh, because this is just a, I, a, few, a little more work to do for the sort of walk audit summary. Uh, there's been a lot of kind of follow on uh, with Bike Durham and uh, the communities there, but we had over, so we, we put together a questionnaire for um, folks that live around North Roxboro, um, specifically, or especially for those uh, north of um, I-85. We had over a hundred responses, a lot of responses. Um, and a lot of folks expressing uh, the things we kind of know, but uh, the desire to, well, first of all, some grading of the quality of the walking as pretty low. So a lot of out of five, a lot of ones and twos, quality of the biking, meaning comfort and safety is really low, one. Um, public transit, not awful, three. We know that's a 15 minute um, corridor there. Um, and driving also not comfortable uh as you know it's when it's dangerous to drive it's dangerous to walk so they, they kind of correlate together um there's a lot of people wanting a lot of things of course uh but these are just some sort of of the of the highlights uh reducing car speeds was 59 out of the 103 people um this was sort of more buffer between the sidewalks and the travel lanes these are a lot of the things that we sort of noticed in our um in our walk audit, of course, more signalized crossings because uh, we know there are only like a couple and they, they have long wait times as well. Uh, bike lanes, separated bike lanes. That's a harder one, but um, in terms of how to do, how to design the roadway, but just it's good to hear uh, sort of some validation about a lot of things we cared about and some things that maybe are a little different that we didn't think about. There's a lot of folks who left. Um, I mean, a lot of folks who left their own thoughts and comments. So there's going to be some going through this and I'll sort of invite folks to go through this a little bit in January. Uh, but um, it's is all kind of looped into the North Roxboro and Mangum Street resurfacings that are happening in 2024 uh, that Bike Durham is sort of trying to organize an effort to um, potentially make those uh, one ways right now, North Roxboro, south of 85 and Mangum are uh, one way, making them both two ways is kind of the overarching goal. Um, so this kind of looped into that effort, though it's not part of the resurfacing corridor technically. Um, but just want to give folks an update on that. We'll be sort of hearing more about that in January. And um, yeah, go ahead, Ann. I have a question on that. So the thought was, since we did it last year as the retreat, and it was kind of like a year project, um, I guess just like what is, and now that you're leaving us and you've kind of been helping really push this forward with Suzanne, um, what is just like the timeline and goal for the Roxborough walk audit? Because I mean, we could make this be, you know, a five-year project, but um, yeah, just. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think the goal is really to have something that the commission will vote on in January. That's my goal. Um, the BPAC commission? Yeah, yeah, BPAC, BPAC. And we'll vote on it and we'll deliver it to city council. That's my goal. Um, yeah, I think it's, the problem is, of course, the scope bleed of this, right? Is like, it can be 
our walk audit, but it's much more than that, you know, now and because this other stuff is looped in, but trying to pull this in and just sort of tighten it up into just sort of what we think that corridor between, um, really between Lavender and Bonaire, honestly, but like old Oxford to um, club, uh, what we think should happen there. It's a little, yeah, anyway, there's a lot that could happen out of that, but we'll have something for January that BPAC will vote on, whether it turns into a, a later thing other than just this document we've produced, I'm not sure. Okay. Thanks. And similar with the UDO as well. I mean, I, I know I've been pushing on the UDO updates. I think the goal is to have a document that we'll vote on in January, just FYI. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, all right. So should we take our group picture for our annual report? Yes, please. Uh, is someone good with taking like a screenshot? I can do it. Okay. Well, let me make sure I get as many, like, all right, if everyone could open their, turn on their cameras. Royal, I hope your cat is in the picture. Yeah. <laughs> the nine, 19th member of BPAC. Suzanne, if you're able, you could open, turn on your camera. If not, Suzanne Walensky, but. Um, yeah, I know I'm having trouble with that. I don't know why. I, I, don't, I don't know why. So just leave no it. <laughs> it might be, okay. Hannah, is she a participant and not a panelist? I have been trying to make her one all night. Um, it just, I think we'll work on it next time, Suzanne. It sure. happened last time too with you, so. Yeah. And we'll Photoshop you in. Yes. All right, folks. I'll count down, and then when I remove my hand, I'm taking the photo. Three, two, one, smile. All right. That oh, was wow. nice. Big smiles. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I'm not even going to take another one. Let me just, uh... yeah. When anyway, you Photoshop, I'll send that in the chat can in a you Photoshop some of us out? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'll, and I'll do like, I'll make sure, you know, we do the kind of like uh, everyone gets their uh face lightened up and all that okay anything else for the annual report i know the committee chairs need to get uh some updates to you hannah but other than that anything else you want to go over no no i think we're all good okay um so i know we only have 12 minutes uh andres what do you think on time i don't have much after that my other stuff is just yeah amazing. just for the sake of comfort motion to add mm -hmm. five minutes to the meeting seconded and then if we don't on, need it we don't need it all in favor five more minutes aye. aye aye all opposed thanks thank you ahead, everyone thanks. for indulging me um dennis am i uh good to kick this off go for it excellent i will be painfully brief um i am sharing my screen now see. Oh, that's strange. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Wonderful. All right. So good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Andre Sotero. Uh, Hannah Preston and I are the city and county, respectively, youth representatives here with BPAC. We've both been on BPAC for roughly half a year now, uh, now that we feel that we've really got our footing down um, of being commissioners here on the BPAC. Um, we feel that we're ready to adequately tackle a social media and comm strategy that's really going to accomplish some of this group's goals. So um, on that note, I wanted to just very briefly go through our communication goals. Um, we wanna share our priorities and actions with an existing audience that we have. Um, this existing audience is in our listserv and is generally made up of active community members on Instagram, uh, the app formerly known as Twitter that I'll be referring to as Twitter throughout this presentation um, and other spaces where folks are engaged on this sort of work. Um, and to that, we also wanna engage a new audience um, with communities impacted by our work. 
So Hannah and I identified students and low-income communities. Um, there are a slew of others um, that um, I don't necessarily want to get into um, unpacking, but there are a lot of communities that um, BPAC, along with other advisory commissions across the city, have had barriers accessing. Uh, and we hope that social media can help uh, bring down those barriers with certain communities. So how is this that we plan on communicating? I should also mention uh, for any questions, if folks wanna put them in the chat or um, voice them at the end, um, just in the interest of time, I'll be sure to jot them down uh, and Hannah and I will be prepared to address them um, at our next meeting. Um, so our communication strategy is relatively straightforward. It is going to be um, sending meeting summaries via the email listserv. Um, and so this ties into our um, sharing our priorities and actions with our existing audience. The listserv isn't necessarily a vehicle for spreading our word out there too much. Um, with Instagram, we will mainly focus on calls to action and educational pieces. Great examples of these would be um, had we had an active Instagram presence for uh, the Fayetteville bike lanes um, situation or uh, some of the work that we're involved in with Roxboro. Um, those are both examples of how Instagram could be used to mobilize folks. Um, this shares our priorities with an existing audience while also drawing in a new audience. Um, just by way of social media has an ability to spread uh, and reach um, new populations that an email listserv wouldn't be able to. Um, and then Twitter, um, we felt that timely responses to city news and updates um, was a good use. Um, and this would mainly be designed to draw in new audiences just by way of folks seeing quick, rapid responses to what's going on in our city on uh, drawing folks in. So with regard to the procedure of social media, this mainly pertains to a posting cadence. Um, we're hoping to produce about two to three tweets a week, um, two Instagram posts a month, and one email summary um, per month, that being the email summaries of every meeting. Um, I'll wrap up soon since I know we don't have too much more time. Um, these posts will be derived from either the contents of our meeting or pertinent current events that are going on here in Durham or beyond. Um, we would like to launch this with the new year. Uh, we feel it fitting um, as we uh, progress into the new year with new leadership. Um, and we're hoping that this item is a standing item that's revisited uh, during triple E meetings, uh, given its uh, strong attachment to engagement with the community. Um, so just to let you know of a few next steps that Hannah and I are going to take, Hannah Preston and I, um, also so folks aren't um, blindsided by our cold emails. Um, so we want to utilize Canva premium resources to put together infographics and content. Um, and so Hannah, I know the city of Durham in the past has had some connections to those resources. And so we might be in touch with you or someone else um, to explore those. Um, we would, as part of uh, mobilizing students through our social media work, We'd like to pull in the BPAC representatives for Duke and NC Central. Um, Royal, I believe when we put this presentation together initially, um, we hadn't yet onboarded you. So I didn't put names because uh, I didn't want to call folks out. Um, but Nathan and Royal, um, we're hoping to get in touch with you um, in the coming weeks to work with either you um, and or students that are interested in this sort of work. Um, be it our urban future, or perhaps with projects that would impact these populations. So the Fayetteville bike lanes with NC Central students. Um, and then finally, identifying potential community partners uh, that could help boost our social media 
whose social media we could boost and partner with in real time. Uh, Bike Durham comes to mind. Uh, and so um, obviously there's no shortage of connections between BPAC and Bike Durham uh, that we will be sure to get in touch with them should we identify that as a path forward. Um, I believe that's all that I have. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, does anyone have any questions that they'd like to include um, in the chat or any, any comments for me off the cuff, any feedback on our strategy that we've presented? Yeah, thanks, Andres. This is Ed. I just, um, it sounds like most of the content is going to be text, but you mentioned things like graphic um, content for Instagram, but to the extent there are graphics and images, um, it would be really appropriate to have some sort of alt text or, or, or audio description um, of, of images for, for people who can't necessarily see what the images are. Certainly, Ed. So just to let you know, um, uh, Hannah Preston will be spearheading most of our Instagram work. And for those of you that are familiar with her Instagram presence, um, she does include alternative text uh, in a lot of her infographic posts that would enable uh, folks to uh, window access that content. So we're hoping that um, a variety of different strategies will help us reach a broader audience, regardless of who's able to read or hear what. Good question, Ed. Uh, first, I'll say thanks, Andres. Yeah, this is super, like, uh, it's just like very great that you're taking on and like starting to think about who to reach out to within the commission and like pull people in. I, I really appreciate that, that you and Hannah are, are starting that. Um, it'd be great to just like get, for those of us who won't be following on Instagram and Twitter directly to get to maybe like every meeting or every other meeting, like, you know, throw, just show a couple posts that you guys made and we can just follow along and give ideas and thoughts. I think this is, it'll spur a lot of interesting thoughts and just the, the, the North Roxborough questionnaire gave me the thought. It's like, yeah, there's like an untapped, volume of people that care about this of course like bike Durham and a lot of other groups are tapping into these but uh we could maybe kind of help build that sort of cohesive community uh within Durham so I appreciate the work there and it'll be interesting to see how it goes and, and Nathan just dropped a couple of links for us on the our urban future uh student group so anything else for Andres but yeah. it's not done today yeah go ahead Hannah yeah, great job. This was um, really awesome to see the work in that you all have been talking about and kind of coming together on. I think it would be great for maybe you and Hannah to meet with, I guess, Suzanne or whoever the next chair is, and then also Scott um, and Mike and just kind of see how the communications for the committees can be um, kind of shared with the community as well, because I think there's a lot of good stuff that happens in the committees but not always are the agendas, you know, given enough in advance, or sometimes people don't know if meetings are happening or what's happening. So um, I think, yeah, maybe communications around that and helping advertise those. Um, I think the community would care about. I mean, Suzanne, that one Tripoli meeting, you know, what, 16, 17 people attended it. And I think more people would attend uh, more meetings if they knew. Yeah, definitely. And, and Echo and great work. I think it uh, sounds like an awesome plan and appreciate y'all being so thoughtful about the approaches uh, to think about. It. I, I I like Dennis's idea, but too about sharing with the having like a, an item on the monthly agenda just to be able to share posts because you know, some of us some of us are not on those platforms. So it would be nice to see, see what's being shared. And um and I appreciate Hannah's comment too. That was going to be one of my questions is I think I liked everything you had, but it would be also nice to help promote some of the committee works as well and making sure, and that may be embedded there. We just didn't see it, but it would be nice to hear some of the, what the committee is, committees are doing too. And maybe that in addition could be an agenda item. Like what are some things people want to be sure to connect with you all about to make sure is being shared as part of social media monthly. Um, but your approaches sound great. And I think they sound reasonable and manageable as well. Like you're not trying to, you know, it's, it is volunteer work. And so, you know, three posts a week and scheduling them out and doing some other posts, you know, with content, I think 
seems like it's pretty manageable. So it's great, great work. Yeah, feel yeah, free to ramp you, up Suzanne. to those numbers. Don't don't feel don't need to reach them in January, right? Like... <laughs> All right. Thanks, Andres. I'll I'll defer any other thoughts or questions to the next meeting. This ship, this is again going to be an ongoing project. So look forward to kind of continuing to hear about it. Um, but yeah, feel free to email us, ask us to help you out. All right, so um, in our last couple of minutes, just I'll go through the last couple items. So the trail bridge inspections is just something I just, I, I thought it's something that BPEC should be updated on. Uh, Dale, maybe you all have seen like uh, the Third Fork Creek Trail. There've been sort of a lot of issues in terms of um, maintenance and safety. Uh, and so Dale was kind of using, just, just querying about who's responsible for maintenance and on these different bridges and trails in Durham and what their schedules are. And he had, there were a lot of emails going back and forth. He luckily sent us uh, a kind of summary uh, that I'll just read to you right now. Um, the city of Durham Public Works Department has taken on the task of inspecting the bridges, stormwater culverts and boardwalks on city of Durham trails. All the structures that the city is responsible for have been inspected and we have closed those that have identified repair needs. Uh, Public Works has requested $2.5 million in funding in the fiscal year 24-25 uh, CIP process for repairs to these structures. So Public Works has looked at it and there's funding, I guess, being asked for to repair a lot of these structures. So just something that I think you all would find relevant might be something we should, uh, if we're asking for budget, um, if we have budget asks from, from the city, maybe we also mention this as something that should be definitely granted. Any immediate thoughts or questions about that? All right, and then last last item here is a presentation that, uh, that Hannah and I are giving tomorrow at the Church World Service. Um, so they have a cultural orientation program that I actually don't know too much about. I haven't catched up on all the emails, but essentially we're gonna give a summary of, of what BPAC does and give folks who, I think it's a number of refugees who are living in Durham is my understanding. Um, Give them a chance to sort of learn about what we do see if there are ways that resources that we could point them to that could help them out or um i think a lot of i mean uh they might many of them maybe uh don't have a car and so bicycle and pedestrian sort of issues are particularly important to them uh so we're gonna have a presentation to go over what bpac does with them and then sort of just a discussion it sounds like to um see if there's anything we can do for them is that fair enough hannah i think that's as i know it. cool do you, do you do you have Mary Rose's slash BPAC's document for how to live in Durham without a car or get around Durham without uh, a car? No. Oh, no, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot that Mary Rose has that. If you don't mind if emailing that, yeah. you might have sent it before, Mary. If, I don't know, but I can share yeah. that with them. Yeah, I can text that or email that to y'all. Sure. Okay. I'll just way. email it to the, the, the group email. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Is it something that could be printed? So yeah, I don't know if it's just people... a Google Doc. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Week without driving. Um, that's great. Yeah, good idea, Nathan. Okay. So we'll do that and give that document as well. That's a great resource, or that's one of the many sort of resources. We'll talk about the bike co-op as well. Um, and uh, I think that's all. So in terms of communication priorities, we have like a lot of ideas for future presentation topics. That's great. Um, I will start a communication with, uh, Brian and Marissa just to start kind of the onboarding. So Ed and I will be transitioning off. Um, and, uh, what we'll do is we'll settle, uh, Hannah, maybe you, Brian, I can settle on that February 10th date, depending on the equity training availability. And... Yes. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll expect in January some hopefully more close to finalized documents for the UDO and the um, North Roxborough presentation. But I think that's it. Anything else in terms of communication priorities from folks? I don't know if you mentioned, I'm, I'm going to be in touch with Brian Fahey about the microtransit. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there are a number of, yeah. So Ed with Brian Fahey, maybe uh, Marissa and Suzanne with um, Fayetteville. Um, Hannah with uh, downtown Durham. Also, we're going to hopefully get to the county, but that'll be in January. Uh, our sort of idea of a good 
development plan in RTP. I'm going to hold on Fayetteville until Marissa is able to reach out and see what kind of contact she has first, if that's all right. Sounds good. Got the thumbs up from Marissa. All right. Hey, sorry, I missed Brian Fahey. Which item was that for? That's for a future presentation about um, the microtransit and go, Thank you. Uh, go triangle potentially. Yeah. All right. Uh, true to form, I've left us a few minutes late <laughs> on my last meeting. Uh, so again, I'll, I'll ask your uh, forgiveness. And uh, it's a dark night tonight. Uh, have a happy solstice, happy holidays, and uh, congrats to, or thanks, I should say, to Brian and Marissa for, for taking on the new roles next year. Um, and thanks, everyone, for this past year. It's been a great year. Done a lot. Um, and all the more to do in 2024. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Dennis. Thanks. Well done, Dennis. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks so much, Dennis.